Hey everybody, welcome back to the Game Vault. I am Captain Beefy with a new series starting up today on No Man's Sky. This is a bit of an older game, and I'm sure anybody in the gaming community <clears throat> knows the story behind No Man's Sky and what a debacle it was at the time of launch. The game at launch, it came out in 2016. And uh, Hello Games' Todd Howard uh, had proposed this open-world, outer space-themed game that would revolutionize gaming, basically, with all these different things it was going to do, all these awesome, um, incredible multiplayer, you know, visiting over a quintillion planets, and it was just insane what was being talked about, and then um, when the game, and you know, they showed us some great uh, visuals from it, looking at <coughs> different planets and different creatures you'd find there, and how amazing it all looked, and it, I'll tell you, it was something, it was really something, then the game was released, you know, but, but I'm getting ahead of myself here, so in any case, before that, everybody, the media took off and ran with it, you know, everybody was like, loosen her mind over it, like, wow, this is gonna, you know, this is it, this is something new and different, and it had so much hype built up around it that it was almost, um, you know, it was too much hype, and when the game launched, it under-delivered probably one of the biggest flops in the history of gaming, you know, when you think of flops at, at launch time, you think of no Man's Sky, you think of um, Fallout 76, there's several of them out there, and, and a lot of these games redeem themselves over time, some don't, some never recover, and they just kind of, you know, fade into the background, but Hello Games, you know, they did not give up, Hello Games slowly and surely began to add content to the game, fixing many of the problems that were inherent with it from the start one update after another, until the most uh, recent one, which involves your freighter ship and being able to, as you can see, build a base inside of it. Now, this is my original base I built inside, and it's crap. I was just throwing stuff around, just playing around with decorations and, and the layout and all that, and I'm very unhappy with it. So I spent a lot of time running around and getting uh, salvage freight modules so that I could get all the different pieces required to build the base. Now I have them. I still need some more to finish up with the engines and whatnot, but I'm getting there. And um, I'm going to do a separate video on what I do to get these modules. All right, so let's first off... You know, we don't fly this ship. No, let's take... We'll take our main ship here. This is the Cardinal Sin. Um, so let's take a look at this freighter. From the outside, there's a lot of different freighter designs in the game. And they're big, they're clunky, for the most part they're ugly and ungainly. But this one? I kind of dug this one. This one is very reminiscent of the Star Destroyers from Star Wars. And it's and it's design and I'm sure that was intentional. You know, kind of pay homage to that. But yeah, I thought it was great looking. I painted it gray and black, and, you know, it, I think it's just fantastic. These are all my little frigates around it, which, that's a another separate video that we'll talk about. Especially this kind here, these whale frigates. But, um, yeah, as you can see, you know, even the, even the back end of it is pretty cool. It's a great looking ship. I like it. This is a Class A. There are four classes of uh, pretty much everything in the game, starting from C to B to A, and then you have S class. S class is, of course, the superior one, and all the others are just not quite as good, but, you know, an A class is fine for now. Eventually, you know, I've been looking for an S class of this, and eventually I'll find it. I will not settle for an S class of any other type. It's just not going to happen. 
All right, so back to the thing at hand. So your freighter has a basic bottom level that stores your ships in it, and it can hold up to, or display up to six of your ships at a time. You can own a total of nine ships. And there's three of them, four and five, and then the cardinal sin over there is number six. This part, you cannot um, build anything down here. It just doesn't happen. You got stairs that lead you up to the bridge, but a recent addition to the game gave us this nice little teleporter, which brings you directly to the bridge area. And this is fantastic. This is where you can manage your fleet. And your fleet is, of course, your uh, frigates that we saw out there, as well as a squadron of fighters. You can warp around the solar system. And you can da, 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 upgrade your freighter by using a variety of different things and, and manners. And again, that's something we'll talk about another time. And of course, we have our buddy here, our navigator, who gives us missions for our frigates to run, which will earn us a variety of great items. So, a current look at the base is, it's just a jumbled mess. It's, yeah, it's hard to get around. It doesn't make a lot of sense. We've got this big room back here for no reason, and then we have this big, you know, it, it's just, I was fooling around, playing with it, and learning how to build, and and every time I got a new uh, piece, I just added it to the puzzle. This, I was trying to flesh out this back area uh, to do some building, and it just didn't work out the way I wanted. We have our fleet command rooms. This is where we look at our uh, frigates that are out on missions. As you can see there, there's three of them, three ships on that one couple more on this one you got a little hydroponics area here where we grow stuff and you know yay it's all good there and we've got our uh, refineries which we use to uh, take resources and make them into other resources by either breaking them down or combining them and then all these storage vessels which have a variety of different items in them from you know, basic resources and, and advanced resources to uh, let's see. Yeah, here's a variety of plants and flora and whatnot. Okay, so as you can see, got all that. And then we've got these. This is a new addition: these stellar extractors. And but everything's all jumbled up and messy and ugly. And for me to come from the bridge which is up here to do things the most common things I do when I when I come to a system are I'm, I'm maybe gonna teleport somewhere but not often but you know uh, but one of the main things I want to do is come here and activate my planetary probe I got to run all the way back and go around all this stuff to do that and then I can discover a system another thing I like to do is look at my ships that are on missions and here I have to come all the way back here and do that and another major thing I do is I use my galactic trade terminal so that I can buy and sell items that I need or don't need so all that stuff should be right up front and then the rest of it can be built around it so yeah I made a mess of this place I know it's awful but, with one simple push of a button, and this is going to hurt, we can reset the freighter base. Goodbye. So the way we did it, we don't recover any items, which sucks, but hey, I've got plenty of resources to build with, so I'm not too concerned about it. Alright, so... What I want to do is make a very functional base that um, everything's accessible, it's got wide open walking areas, and different areas have different um, reasons to exist. You know, like if you go into an area, you're going to be able to do everything you need to do in that area without running all over the place. Like if I come to a new system, I'll be able to go scan that system right away, check my freighters do my sales and teleport if I need to and all that's going to be right up front so we access the uh, menu and I'm doing this on PlayStation 5 by pushing up on the 
D-pad. And then first things first, we're just going to select something at random. We're going to hit square. And then we're going to delete these pieces. Oh. Am I going to be able to do that? I might have to leave this one. Let's see. A... Okay, so now we've deleted everything. So we're going to go in and we're going to start off with a basic industrial room. And we're going to build this one, two, three, four, five. I see we have NPCs appearing six back. And we're going to go one. Whoops. That was a mistake, but okay. So now when we come into the ship from out here, we've got this nice, massive open area. And that's perfect. We've got lots of dudes hanging out now, wandering around, and they're doing nothing. So next thing we want to do is, some of the first things we do when we come to a system is we like to check... the area out and see what's going on, right? I'm going to need an eye out. Oh. Well, this is something I didn't anticipate. Going to need an eye on battery. <laughs> I should have picked some of that stuff up out of the thing. All right, well, let's do this. I wasn't quite ready to go this route, but hey. And we need glass. All right. We were going to do this anyway, but we're going to have to start here. This is not where I wanted to start. All right. Well, let's start putting in our... different resource areas. Once we have these in, we'll be able to access any missing resources that we need to build, because I'm sure I'm going to burn through quite a few. Okay, that's wonderful. And they retain their names, that's great. So I needed an ion battery. And I remember we kept those right here in our building supply box. We don't need that many, so we're only going to grab a few right now. Alright, so back to where we were going and that was to build our scanner room so there it is nice and easily accessible right we come from the bridge boom in addition to that we want to have the galactic trade terminal handy so we're going to put that baby right there. And then we want our 
lovely. Where are they? Fleet command rooms. Put, you can only have five, well, you only get five missions daily, but sometimes these missions run a long time, over 24 hours, so it's nice to have the extra rooms, because sometimes you will have some overlap, and ten's a good number. So from right here, we can walk in, we can scan, we can trade, boom, we have that. All our, all our uh, fleet command rooms in a nice big open area. It's almost a little too open, but that's okay because, as you can see, we've got plenty of stuff in here to fill up that empty space. Lots of decorative things. And that's where the fun will come in a little bit later on. All right. So that's looking absolutely awesome so far. So back in here, this is where all the magic happens. This is where all the uh, stuff is stored, all the items and all that that you need. And this is also where we're going to do our refining. I'm going to need some dihydrogen jelly for that. So we'll make some of that real quick. Where was it? Where was it? There it is. As we throw in our refiner rooms, we're going to do just a total of three of them. Maybe it's a little overkill. Maybe not. So there's all of our functional main things that we need. Right? There's a lot of other rooms that we can add into here. A teleporting chamber is important. Appearance modifier, but we're going to save that for a different area. And we've got these different specialists. And we've got like the orbital exocraft materializer. This is uh, a good room to have, but it's unimportant to have out front because you never need to access it. Just having it on your ship will do uh, what it's supposed to. The stellar excavator rooms, these are something that we're going to put in, but we're going to have a separate area for that. Specialist room, weapons terminal, yada, yada, yada. So, the only other two main ones we're going to want are definitely a teleport chamber. And... This room... right there. Easy to get to, right? And then let's put in our overseer's room. Our scientist, there he is. So, how do we want that facing? I think like that works.
and there's our little scientist guy. Hello. So now we got a nice little dedicated worker in there. Now we can teleport all over the galaxy, but we have no power. How interesting is that? <laughs> Why do we have no power? Okay, it's a visual thing. We have power. Perfect. Now, another thing that I recommend you do, once you start building, is to come out here. And we're going to go to... There it is, the save point. We're going to put a save point right out here. Outside of the build area. And there's a reason for that. Um, I've had it happen to me and I've seen it online where it's happened to other people where you know you have it somewhere back here in your ship you save off after doing stuff and then all of a sudden when you load back in nothing spawns in around you properly so now you're stuck doesn't you shut the game off do it again and, you know and you're just basically stuck there and you have to go back to an older save which can really be a painful thing to have to do so that's why I put the save thing out here every now and then once I get done with a major portion of what I'm doing I say okay save off now all this is done I don't have to worry about um, it disappearing on me I'm kind of uh Thinking the corridor might be a better way to go here. Let's let's try something out here. We're gonna do a little science. I'll have to put one more in just to see. It might not be good. No, it's not. Okay. I had, you know, the one I worked on earlier looked different than this. It looked a little better, but whatever. Maybe it's the layout. I done wait a minute Did that do what I think it just I think that snapped to the higher point well that's interesting because if that's the case that would be a much better way to do things Yeah, this is so much better. Oh my god, look at this. So can I do this all the way across, I wonder? Uh, I sure can. Alright, so this whole... Okay, so this whole area is going to be much better off. This is more what I was going for. I don't know why it worked out like that. I guess there's snap points. I'm just learning, you know, this is a brand new thing, so kind of learning this as we go, and hopefully you'll learn a little bit too um, through my mistakes and at the cost of my resources. So let's go ahead and delete all of these. And we'll put some more in. Yeah, look how much better this is.
What is that? Did I lock myself out? I think I did. Oh, this here, yeah. Alright, so now we've got a much bigger, more open area that's really going to look sharp in comparison. I screwed up when I did the original deletion. Alright, well that's pretty cool. At least this way we're recovering some of our resources. Now we've got a massive and spacious open area. Whew, coloring's a little brutal. But it's not bad. Not bad at all. And like I said, we've got plenty of stuff that we can put in here that will make it, you know, give it a little variety in its look. Now we've got this little hallway here. Not really sure I like that. I almost want to move that out to there because of the hallway thing. Let's, yeah, let's do that. And this one will Okay, now that hallway doesn't feel so out of place. I'm not liking what's going on here. I was kind of hoping these rooms would open up. But instead they all feel down, so I might have to I might have to change this setup a little bit and maybe I'll move these technology or these uh refiners and put them in the middle along with a couple other things to uh, make that area a little more cohesive because I like the open area. The open area to me is uh, much, much better. Oh, need a couple more dihydrogen jelly. go get our buddy there okay so yeah you know I almost think uh, maybe another guy here and it would kind of round that area off nicely uh, how about our weapons guy yeah so let's go ahead and mm -hmm. And weapons terminal. I would like that to be open. 
All right, why is it recessed? I don't like that. See, I don't get that. I wonder if there's something to do with the placement of it. It's just that type of room. See, that doesn't make sense. Let's try deleting this. And now let's try it and see if it lines up better. Nope. Will the ExoCraft guy line up? Nope. Maybe it's all... Oh, it's all of this type of room does that. Okay. So these are built lower. These other ones are built higher. So we've got the fleet commands, we've got the scanner, teleport, scientist construction, the trade terminal, technology room. So I guess we can do this. And then we've got our appearance modifier. And that leaves us a nice big open area to work with here. So coming in from the ship, I'm out on a busy, doing busy No Man's Sky stuff. Come in at a quick glance, I can look left and right. Now these terminals, the ships are blue when they're on a mission, they turn green when they're back. So at a quick glance, I'll be able to see if any of them are back or not. And then I can you know, do all my trading in here scan a system if I got a teleport I just got to take a short jog down here the appearance modifier not a big deal um, and then these guys are just here for aesthetics you know these are some working dudes looking good all right so I guess we could keep with the openness here. Yeah. And just have a short haul into here. And then this is going to have to change because I do not like what's going on here. So we will delete that, delete that, and that. We'll delete that. Okay, so heading into that back area then, this is where all of these interesting things happen. So well, how many things do we have to put in here? We have to put in this guy, there's one. Refiner room is two. Actually, we don't need that one in there. The specialist we need, so there's two, three, three things we've got five spaces and we wanted to do three refiners so let's start with one refiner two refiners and three refiners cool we need some warp cells oh no we don't we got that okay so this guy is our Exocraft Specialist. And again, this, he's here purely for the look of it. Uh, I want to angle it, I think, like that. Yeah, that looks good. So, you know, we can... Whoops, wrong thing. Now I got a guy in here somewhere. There he is. Cool. So yeah, we got him there, and then we will put our weapons terminal guy right there. Summon him in. 
and now we've got a really solid looking uh, building area which I think is pretty cool so basically we've done everything we need to do to make a nice big functional open area uh, for our game. This will make getting around easy. This will make you know accessing stuff easily. It's very plain right now. It's very utilitarian, and that's fine. That's the way it's supposed to be right now. We're um, not looking to win any beauty contests, but in the future you know we're going to dress this up a lot and make it look pretty cool because we still have a lot to do in this game to make this a um, a more welcoming place to live and hang out. So, thanks for joining me today. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. I gotta love these things. All right. Well, thanks for joining me today on the very first episode of No Man's Sky. I didn't want to do a walkthrough with this game. It's been out for six years, and here we are doing a, a run through. Um, so I kind of wanted to go through and just look at some different aspects of the game and see what makes this game so unique and where the longevity came from. In the very beginning, you didn't have this. You couldn't build freighter bases, anything like this. It was just... There was... You know, it, it wasn't a thing. And the game has really updated and grown and, and become such a nice thing. And one of the best things about it is when you buy No Man's Sky, I don't care if you bought it day one or yesterday, there's not a single microtransaction in the game. Everything you see here can be earned through playing the game. Now, some stuff, you know, might be through some events that have come and passed. I missed a lot of events myself. I kind of got away from the game for a while. But none of it costs an extra dollar out of your pocket. There's no season passes. Every single update that has come out has been free. They haven't nickeled and dime players. And Todd Howard and Hello Games redeem themselves immensely through this game. So if you're not playing and you've never played it, I recommend picking it up. I'm sure you can get a decent deal on it now. It's a six-year-old game. You can probably find a used copy of it if you want. When I bought it, I got it a few years back. It was in on its path of redemption already. And I had, I think it was $30 at the time, and somebody gave me like a $15 PlayStation card or $25 PlayStation card. I was like, you know what, for the balance of it, I'm going to buy this game just because I've heard so much bad about it and so much good about it, it that it just fascinated me and I had to see it for myself. And it's a game I don't regret getting. I'll play it for a while, I'll shelve it, you know, put my save file uh, up in the cloud, take it off the console, play some other stuff and all that, two, three updates come out, I'll jump back in and it's like a whole new experience every time I do that. So I highly recommend the game. Thanks for joining me on my freighter tour. Um, off camera, I'm going to dress it up a little bit, and we'll take a look at it in the next episode when um, we start talking about how to get all the parts you need for making your freighter. Thanks for joining me, everybody. As always, I'm Captain Beefy with the Game Vault. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel, especially if you found this helpful, interesting, or anything like that at all. Um, and don't forget to share us on social media and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the game. Have you played it? Have you been avoiding it because of um, all the negative press that it's gotten through the years? Um, you know, is it something you'd be interested in trying out? You can play multiplayer on it too, which is kind of sweet. You know, it's and it's not a heavy multiplayer thing. It's not like you have to do all this stuff with somebody else and all that. You could just get in chat with somebody, put them in your group, and just kind of hang out and go explore worlds together and, and, and whatnot. I like the game because it's so chill. And I call it my Zen game. This is the game I play when I've just had like a, you know, it's been a rough week and I'm tired and I'm beat up and I just want to do something that doesn't necessarily have a lot of pressure on me. 
you know, yeah, you can die in the game. It is a survival game. You can get killed in combat, but as far as survival games go, it's very easy. You don't have to worry about food, water, shelter, and all that kind of, well, shelter you do have to worry about to a small degree, but it's basically you versus the elements, and, you know, don't pick a fight with something you can't kill. All right, we'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks for joining me.